Welcome back, y'all. So today we're going to be talking about how to download R so you can start using it. So the very awesome, cool, totally spectacular thing about R is that it is free and will always be free. And it is open source and will always be open source. Nonetheless, you have two options. A lot of my students like to use what's called R Studio. Um, in some ways, it makes using R a little bit easier, but I personally prefer downloading it from the source itself, and that's because I'm a Mac user. If I were a PC user, I'd probably use R Studio. And what I like about R on, well, I'll show you that in a minute. So in order to download it, you would go to cran.r-project.org, or you could just do a Google search for R Cran download. That's what I did, and it took me to this site. And then you click on the link that you want to download, and then you just choose the latest release. Now, I've already do done that, so I'm not going to do that, but I'll let you do that on your own. Or you could download our studio. No harm in downloading both. And they have, uh, wow, $30,000 a year. So if you have $30,000 a year, that sounds awesome. Otherwise, do the free one. So that's what I do. And then you would go here and then choose uh, your operating system, be it Windows, Mac, Ubuntu, Fedora, or whatever you want to do. And go ahead and start that, and I will see you back when it is done. And you don't really need me to tell you how to install a program, right? Double click, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm assuming you get there. So once you've downloaded R and have it up and running, well, here's R Studio, and it's got several different windows. The console window, that shows you, it's kind of like a log that tells you what you did and what it's doing in the background and that sort of thing. This shows you your plots. Uh, I don't really, oh, environment, uh, don't worry about that. And what I'm going to do is if you want to create a new script or a new file or whatever, you can create an R script here and I like to minimize this because I almost never look at that and then rearrange my windows here and here you can start typing R commands so I'm going to start with hello is equal to six so I'm creating an object called hello and giving it the value of six and now if I wanted to uh, run now right now this isn't actually doing anything um, R doesn't even know that I'm assigning the value of six to the word hello. Um, and so what I do is I highlight that line or put my cursor at that line and hit command return. And you'll notice that as soon as I did that over here, this tells you what has actually happened. This is telling you kind of what you planned to happen. Uh, over here, it tells you what you just did. And so now if I type in hello, so here I said hello is equal to six. And now if I highlight or have my cursor on hello and hit command return it returns the value of six and so it tells me the object hello contains the value six noise and so let's say we wanted to compute the mean we could say mean and then don't worry about what this next part means c one two three four five and so if i run that it'll compute the mean of the values one, two, three, four, and five, which is three. So that is a brief intro to R Studio, or I could go plot one, oops, one through 10, one through 10, and then down here it'll show me a plot of the values one through 10 on the x axis, one through 10 on the y axis. Now, here's the thing that I don't like about R Studio. Uh, when you are typing in a function, let's say you're doing LM. It would be nice to know what the arguments are, what the function lm is expecting from me. Now, having used lm for a long, long time, I know what it ex expects of me, but sometimes when you're using a new function, you don't remember what the arguments are, okay? So that's my qualm with RStudio. Now let's go back to R. And this is the R interface, much simpler, I think, much more flexible. The other thing that I like about it is I can change the size of these. I think this window is a little small for my taste. This one's a little bit bigger. So this is the equivalent. So this on the left is the equivalent of this on the left over here. So if I were to do the same thing 
And then on the right is equivalent to the right over there. So if I go hello equals ah equals six. And then same thing, command return to run that. And then if I type in hello, it'll tell me over here what the value of hello is. Now here's the cool thing. Now if I did the same thing as I did before, mean, open parentheses, if you look down here, it tells you what arguments it's expecting. So it's expecting x. Now that's not very informative at this point. So we're just going to do the same thing we did before just to show that you get the same results. But now let's go ahead and look at a function that's a little bit more complicated than mean. If I type in lm, now it gives me the arguments that it's expecting. So if I type in lm, it's expecting a formula of some sort, which we'll talk about eventually. It's expecting a data set. It's expecting an argument for subset, for weights, for NA action, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, most of these have defaults that you don't actually need to adjust these, but it's very, very helpful to have R tell you what the arguments are. And so I favor doing regular old R, at least if I'm on a Mac. If you're on a PC, unfortunately, it doesn't give you those code hints, which is kind of annoying. So if I were on a PC, um, the advantages of RStudio outweigh the advantages of the native interface of R. So anyway, um, in summary, R on a Mac gives you code hints, or it tells you what the arguments are that they're expect. Oh, well, one of the things about, uh, let's say, okay, yeah. I'll give one advantage. So our studio, let's say we create an object called Q is equal to the mean. So we've got two objects now. We've got a hello object and we've got a Q object. And now what we could do is, oh, look at that. You actually can get code hints. I knew this, um, but I find it annoying that you have to put your um, cursor over there, and I still haven't figured out exactly when to get this to work. Oh, there you go. So it looks like you hover your mouse over the word that has the function, and then it will tell you the arguments. I just kind of find that annoying. But here's one advantage of RStudio, is if I go H-E-L, look at that. It remembers that I created an option called hello, and so I start typing it, and then I can hit tab and say, yes, that's the object that I'm looking for. And then I can say hello plus Q. And if, well, I'll just say quagmire. So now the mean of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is called quagmire. And now if I start doing that, look at that. It pops up, and I can click on it or whatever. And that will give me uh, the sum of 6 and 3. So it really doesn't matter to me what you use. Doesn't matter to anyone what you use. RStudio has some awesome benefits and I actually do use RStudio for R Markdown and stuff like that and LaTeX and we'll eventually talk about that. Uh, so RStudio is cool. Native R is cool. Totally depends on what you want to use and I will probably alternate between both of them. But it really doesn't matter because the code itself is going to be the same. We'll see you next time when we talk a little bit more about functions in R.